When thinking about Korea, there's one clear thing that stands out to me. Open Gangnam Style. But on a serious note, one of the things that always comes to mind is Korean cinema. These words have had an interesting evolution which at first started as a means to prove how much of a quote-unquote cinephile you were has quickly grown into a colossal giant largely due to the immense success that is Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. There's plenty of films if you want to get your feet wet in this country's filmography. Park Chan-wook and Bong Joon-ho's films are really well regarded and very accessible for most people. There's a large array of other films that are worthy of seeing, including Burning, Blade of the Immortal, and Three Iron. It's a very interesting deep dive to do, and truthfully, I'm still considered a semi-newbie in the grand scheme of things for Korean cinema. I mention this because while, of course, there are plenty of people that I could shine a spotlight on, there is no one more intriguing to me than Kyung Po Hong. You may have read the title and thought it bold of me to call Kyung Pyo Hong the Deacons of South Korea, but once you take a look back at this man's career, the comparison is easy to see. It should be noted that Hong only has 21 years of cinematography experience, whereas Deacons has a career that doubles that. I bring this up because I believe in 20 years we will be talking about Hong as one of the best cinematographers to step behind the camera. However, South Korean Roger Deakins dot 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 eventually didn't sound as good. So here we are with me showing you what fascinates me about Kyung Pyo Hong. Born in 1962, Kyung Pyo Hong, also known as Alex Hong, is one of the most influential director of photographies that has introduced numerous technologies in the Korean film industry. Hong started his career out in the United States learning the ins and outs of the Hollywood system that he would bring back to Korea. Hong was a huge advocate for the Hollywood system where the director of photography was in charge of both the photography and the lighting. This is a huge plus for his career because you'll notice a trend of his films have insanely good lighting. I'll touch on this more because I could talk on this for days about how crucial lighting can be to evoke things in a film, but I'll leave you with this example what someone as talented as Kyung Pyo Hong can do. In Snowpiercer, Hong opted to use real fire for one of the most evocative parts of the film. The same goes for plenty of other scenes as each of the carts in the film posed a new sandbox for Hong to play in, each being executed terrifically. Seriously, thinking about this film for more than a second, you'll realize the immense amount of thought that was put in to make Snowpiercer work so well visually. Additionally, Hong places an emphasis on a collaborative effort between the entire crew to maximize creative efforts. This is something that feels very apparent in his works like Parasite, where in interviews everybody seems to be on the same page of what aesthetic they were going for and how that played for the film. While Hong started off with a pretty great career with the camera, what really put him on the map was Brotherhood of the War, a film that had a visual style and production to match and even rival those of mainstream Hollywood films at the time. With that said, there's going to be three main films that I wanted to cover that really allow Hong to put his talent on full display. Those of course are going to be The Wailing, Burning, and Parasite. You'll notice that those three are all from different directors, which always makes the work of a cinematographer that much more impressive when regardless of who's directing the film, it still looks exceptional. Also, little warning, there will be slight spoilers. Note, I typically go into films blindly, so these are all worth checking out, but if you want to go in knowing nothing, now would be your chance to do so and leave. But with that said, we'll get into the first film with The Wailing. The Wailing comes to us from Hong Jin Na and is a mystery thriller that I actually hadn't seen before making this video. I was really interested in this project to begin with and I took a chance on Hong putting in good work here and of course it paid off. All three of these films have their own strengths in the cinematography but for some reason I think I walk away being the most impressed by Hong's work in this project of the three. 
There is something unique that Hong is able to do with the framing that really brings you in and sells you on the thrills of this film. This film had chills running down my back and this is a clear example of why lighting is so important. You'll look at something like the exorcism scene and it's clear the lighting between the scenes was intentionally made to keep you on edge, which worked so well for me. There's also a really brilliant amount of work towards the end of the film from Hong and I'll just say if you've seen the film, you'll know. Hong really excels at knowing the right type of atmosphere to create for a film and it's really apparent with the wailing. Next on the list is Burning from Lee Chang Dong that is based off a Haruki Murakami short story. I don't think I have too much to say on Hong's efforts here besides it looks absolutely stunning. You could randomly pick out any scene from this film and it's an instant beautiful desktop background that's a awestruck levels of stunning. Even if you get a cow in the shot, it looks phenomenal. The color usage in this film is incredible and they really sell this tone this film needs. In truth, I'm really unsure about how I feel about burning in total. It's a film I've yet to rate and I'm not sure if I'll ever stick on a definitive score. There's something that feels like there's more to it every time I think about it, and I really have to dig into it again. But as for the visuals, there is not a dispute. Every frame of this is tremendous. With Hong even taking home the Golden 300 award for his efforts. If the wailing was Hong showing off his ability for thrills with the camera, I think Burning is a perfect example of how he can visually sell a mystery, which is so impressive. Last but not least is Parasite from Bong Joon-ho that has become one of the more popular films of 2019 and has ascended to the number one rated feature film on Letterboxd. At this point, we've talked about the specific strengths of the lighting plenty, but I feel like I did a disservice not recognizing Kyung Pyo Hong. Everyone has marveled at what went into to make each of the two families' homes look so distinctive. Out of all the trio of films, this one definitely has the visuals that are directly linked to the themes of this film. This harps back on that collaborative effort that Hong is known for. Every single expression that these characters portray grants you a lens into their viewpoint. Whether it be the wonder of Ki Wu, the motherly concern of Ki Jung, or the unforgettable boiling rage of Mr. Kim makes you feel every second of. The point is Jun Ho, Hong, and the rest of these actors really seemed like they had it down to a science of how to show emotions and conflicts the characters were feeling. And that's just the start. I know I've mentioned lighting a ton, but it's so impactful to the story, especially here, as it really helps differentiate between the two families. Opting to go with a crude, dusty green color really does feel like they are trapped. The lack of windows is another clear method of getting this point across that worked really well. Then brightening up the Park family makes it feel like a fake sense of joy that is almost impossible to reach. They are surrounded by light because every day is a bright new opportunity with their wealth. This could have been overdone or underdone, but Hong gets the Goldilocks lighting to make it just right. Also, it's impossible not to talk about the rain sequence because man oh man, if we did best scenes of the year, this would have to be in the discussion because just displaying this snap back into cruel reality is done perfectly. It's one of those things you might not catch initially or even your first viewing, but seeing the Park family welcome the rain while the Kim family is destroyed by that same force is inspired filmmaking. Hong has said that they took multiple days to get this sequence perfect, as this was the only on-location scene in this film away from the two house sets. 
Just like with Snowpiercer, this was Hong doing the most to make a scene look as believable and moving as possible. These scenes were very complicated individually. This film relies on this sequence so heavily to sell this entire point of the story. Hong is really able to sell this dread of an unstoppable force that is capitalism in this film, and is one of the many people who made Parasite into such an iconic film of 2019. I guess I'll say this as the video comes to a close. Hong for sure has a ways to go to catch up to the like of Deacons, but he's definitely put himself in a place to reach and maybe even one day surpass that. I just feel like this guy deserves recognition as he keeps turning in terrific and amazing efforts these past two years. I feel like A Star is Born should have been subbed out for burning for cinematography because Matthew Libatique made Venom the same year. And I like some of my songs. What the fuck does she know about cinematography? So he very well could have had two Oscar nominees in the past two years. I just feel like Emmanuel Lubeski has been rightfully put on a pedestal as competition for Deacons. But I think Kyung Pyo Hyung is also in that same conversation and deserves a spot. Hopefully we get to a point where we all collectively agree that this man is one of the most talented cinematographers working so he can finally get the recognition he deserves. Thanks for checking in on another Foreign Film Friday. If you liked this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more of these in the future. This took me a bit longer because I'm learning new editing things and I really wanted to try to lengthen these videos to go really in depth on a particular topic. As a consequence, I'm not really sure how frequently these videos will be posted because they require a decent amount of time to make. As you can see, we haven't done one of these videos since August. If y'all prefer shorter videos, let me know down below because I can have those come out as frequently as once a week as this initially was just meant to expose people to more foreign film, but again, feedback would be greatly appreciated. Additionally, if you have a topic you'd like us to cover, feel free to comment down below as I have a working list on Letterboxd from what people have given me. Whoa, Tiny, hey, if you like this video, check out all the videos that are playing on screen right now. I haven't slept, and it's 7 a.m. Thanks. Bye.